All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the valve cover gaskets on a 2012 Honda Odyssey, but it should be the same process if you have a 2011 to 2017. So let's go ahead and get started and let me walk you through this step by step. So first thing is first, we're going to start by removing this plastic cover that sits over the intake manifold. So here we have the intake manifold. And in order to replace the valve cover gaskets, you actually are going to have to remove it. So there is no other way around this. You're going to have to take all of this apart. So take your time when you're doing all this and I will walk you through step by step. So the next thing I'm going to be removing is the scoop that goes into the intake. They just have these plastic clips that you're gonna pull up and you're gonna release them. Now during this whole process, you're gonna be disconnecting a lot of pigtails and removing a lot of connectors out of the way. And sometimes you will get a check engine light uh, from disconnecting a certain plug. So in order to avoid any check engine lights, we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery. So the next thing you're going to want to remove is this intake. So you're going to go ahead and disconnect this pigtail that goes to the mass air. So when you get to these clamps and you're trying to find the correct socket that fits onto this bolt, it's actually a 5.5 millimeter. So uh, I know it's kind of odd, but if you have a 5.5, it fits right on here. It does have a spot where you could put your Phillips screwdriver in and twist it off. But if you run into the situation, just like I did, that it's too tight to break it loose, you're going to need a 5.5 millimeter. All right, now that I have the intake out of the way, I can go ahead and start disconnecting some of these pigtails that go onto the throttle body. And you're going to discover that there is a ton of pigtails and there's a ton of hoses that are going to be connected to the intake manifold and you're just going to simply remove them one by one. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with that and start to remove all of these electrical connectors off of the intake. So whenever you guys are doing a job like this, you're going to want to disconnect as little as possible and only disconnect the things that you need to. In this situation, I have to remove the intake manifold, but the throttle body is attached to the coolant lines. So since the throttle body is attached to the coolant lines, I'm gonna want to either remove the coolant lines or disattach the throttle body from the intake manifold. And what I'm gonna try to do right now is I'm gonna remove the throttle body and leave the coolant lines intact because I don't wanna get coolant everywhere and I think it's going to be an easier, better route for us replacing this, um, the valve cover gasket. So let's go ahead and I'm going to remove the throttle body. Uh, it's just four bolts. All right, so you can see I have the throttle body disconnected and the coolant lines are still attached to it. So now I haven't made a mess. The cooling lines are in place and I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just kind of putting it to the side and now I could address all of this. Just keep in mind, the throttle body does have a throttle body gasket right here. And when you disconnect this, if it gets, if it gets damaged, you're going to have to replace it. So now that we have the throttle body removed, you're going to notice there is a hose that goes to the top of this intake manifold right here and it's attached to some sort of solenoid. And what we're gonna do, since we wanna disconnect as little as possible, is I'm just gonna disattach it from the top of this nozzle right here and unbolt these bolts. So now we're gonna disattach this vacuum hose that goes to the brake booster. Now we're going to disconnect this hose right here that goes into the intake manifold. And of course we have this plug that connects right here. We're going to disconnect this. Sometimes you can have a stubborn plug and you might need to use a screwdriver 
to kind of help release where it's been sitting for the last 100,000 miles. So that's out of the way. So now that we have majority of all the hoses removed and everything out of the way from the intake manifold, we're gonna go ahead and address this top plate. And I went ahead and I blew everything off with compressed air. And you should try to do the same because once you expose this, if you have a bunch of dirt and sand along here, it could fall into the intake. But we're gonna go ahead and break all these loose and remove this cover. All right, so when you get to this top plate right here, it's gonna be stuck onto the intake manifold. What you're gonna to wanna to use is a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar like I have right here. And along here, there are little lips, okay? You're gonna use those lips to kind of break them loose. Take your time, don't pull too hard. You can see I have broken them loose and then you move to the back and use what you can use as leverage to break this whole cover loose. Now, while I'm doing this process that I'm removing the bolts, I am putting them in my tray. I have my, my magnetic tray. And as I move to the next station, I use different containers. So I kind of, when I break, when I start breaking anything down, I like to separate it in different containers so I know exactly where the bolts go to what part. So it makes it a little bit easier when you're putting things back together. Okay, so when you remove the top of this plate, there is a gasket. This is an important gasket and I would recommend you replacing it. You could use it if it looks good, if it's been re replaced recently, but it's, if it hasn't, you should replace this upper gasket and even the lower gasket that I'm gonna show you. But this part is very critical because if there's air escaping into here, it could cause your car to run lean or run rough. So it is something that you should take care of and you should address. Now also inside here in this valley, you can see there is another gasket. Keep this in mind, don't lose it, pay attention to it because you can lose it in the process of removing this intake manifold. Now, there are bolts all along here that's holding everything down. We're simply gonna break them loose and remove it so we could remove the manifold. So the bolts that you're gonna be removing are the 12 millimeter, and they're the bigger ones, and you're gonna see they're all along here. You're gonna pull them all out and you're gonna leave the other ones in place, the 10 millimeters. Now that I have this loose, and it's just as simple as pulling up. So along the bottom of this intake manifold, there is another gasket and this gasket will definitely have to be replaced. You can see how it's kind of broken and brittle I, would, I am going to definitely replace this. I was gonna replace all of them, but this is something to keep in mind. If your gasket is looking like this and it hasn't been replaced in a while and you never have gone into your intake manifold to remove it for any reason, it is time to replace it. This is important, keep that in mind. Not only you're doing the valve cover gaskets, you're gonna be doing the intake manifold gasket as well. Okay, so we are here and we can finally see the valve covers. And before we continue any further, what I would want you to do, and this is always a great practice to do, is you see these runners right in here. This goes straight into your cylinder. You're gonna want to cover it with something. If you have a clean shop rag or even tape, you should seal this up with something and that's what I'm gonna do right now. All right guys, so before I continue any further, what I would like you to do is blow everything off. Now that we have this sealed and there's nothing that could get into here, into the runners and into your cylinders, you should blow everything off because you can see right all along here, the top of the valve covers and everywhere, basically in this engine compartment, there's sand, there's dust, there's rocks. As you start to remove everything, 
you could have some of that debris fall into your valve covers um, and fall into your cylinders and you don't want any of that falling in there so it, it it's always a good idea to clean everything blow it off all right so now that we're ready to remove the valve cover before we get to the all the plugs let's go ahead and remove all of the coil packs that are along the front here it's always a good idea to inspect the coil pack i have all six to replace and i'm going to be replacing all of them even though there's just one broken i'm going to be replacing all of them because they all have around the same type of the same age so it's just a matter of time before this one will start breaking down and looking like this okay I have all the coil packs out of the way now I'm gonna start removing these plugs right here and I'm we're gonna to try to do this without disconnecting as much as possible so I'm just gonna disconnect these two plugs and I'm gonna remove this piece of plastic where the harness goes out of the way and we're gonna see if we could access this valve cover if we can't access the valve cover then I'm gonna to have to disconnect this cable from the alternator but we're going to try to remove as little as possible and as long as we could service this valve cover we're going to continue to work here and there's a plastic clip here you're going to get a flathead screwdriver and you're going to pull up and it should release it just like that that part is loose and now we're going to do the same to this bottom part okay So it looks like I'm going to have to also remove this pigtail right here so we could have enough room. And now we can see we have enough room where we could access the valve cover and not take too many things apart. So here is a brand new valve cover. And the reason I purchased this is because the one I have, I noticed that I have some damage along the metal. It has uh, melted or broken away or eroded and it is no longer any good. So I went ahead and I ordered a new valve cover to be able to replace it. But this gives me the ability as well to show you where are the bolts. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five bolts and they're gonna be located right along here. So we're going to break all of those loose and remove this valve cover up and maneuver it out of the way. Now, a lot of times, since the valve cover has been on here for so long, it's going to fight you and it's going to be a little difficult removing it. So you're going to have to have some patience, even pry underneath very gently and maneuver it out of the way so sometimes it takes a little bit of time to break it loose there i could hear it's coming loose So I was able to remove it, but I noticed, and I'm sure you did as well, it was a little tough removing the valve cover with the wire still attached. So I think the best method is gonna be removing this cable right here, the wire for the alternator. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. So right now I'm just gonna clean any debris that sits along the outside of this head and just cleaning all the dirt off. Making sure, and I'm paying attention, not to wipe any of the dirt into the cylinder. I'm wiping it away from it. Okay guys, I just wanted to point this out. When you remove the valve cover, there is gonna be a little bit of RTV right here. You're gonna wanna scrape that off and apply it when you install the gasket. I'm gonna get this blade, this scraper, and I'm gonna scrape this away and remove it. But if you get any of it inside the cylinder head and it falls in there, just simply remove it out of there. So even though I was very careful 
I still managed to drop some inside the cylinder head. And I got this tape right here, it's just masking tape. And I wrapped it around my finger and I basically left the adhesive part sticking out. And I'm just gonna stick it inside there and remove the piece of the gasket. It's actually right there. So just a little tip, something that you can do to easily remove the gasket from in there. You can blow it out with the with compressed air, but just just a reminder, there is oil inside here, so it's just gonna splatter all over the place. All right, so here is another spot right across from where we removed the other one. There's another spot right here where I'm gonna be scraping the silicone. Now, this one, it's gonna be a little bit harder to catch capture on film, so you're gonna do the same process that I showed you before. You're just gonna be scraping away from the cylinder hole where the cavity is. It's gonna be scraping away and gently remove the silicone. All right, so now we're gonna replace the gasket off of the valve cover. Now, since I ordered a brand new valve cover, it already has a gasket installed. But so you guys could understand what's going on and what to do, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the gasket from here and show you exactly how to do this process. Now, the kit that I purchased, it came with all of the rings that go around here on the gasket on the valve cover, those cover up the coil packs. Now these go on the bolts and I'm gonna show you exactly how to install them. So more than likely, just like it happened to me, uh, the gasket that goes around the, the valve cover was very easy to remove. If it wasn't, then you're gonna have to get some type of screwdriver, flathead screwdriver or a pick or something and gently. You don't wanna damage the valve cover gently pry it apart and remove it. Once you have that removed, it's time to replace these big O-ring washer looking things. So sometimes these could be very stubborn and they could be hard to remove. What I do is I get a flathead screwdriver and I tap along the edge. And a lot of the times it's a combination of everything. And what I mean about that is you're gonna kind of tap away at this and break it loose on in every corner and then even come in here with some pliers and pull it off. It's a very time consuming part uh, of this replacement and it's probably going to be the part that's going to take you the longest to do. So you can see I have broken this corner loose and I'm going to bend it a little bit more towards the center. And now, since we have this whole corner freed up, I'm gonna just pry it up. So, of course, inside here, you're gonna wanna clean this up. And if you discover that your valve cover is damaged, like the one I have in front of me, then just go ahead and replace it. Okay, so you see I pulled this one up, and you can see inside here, there is not much left. You can see I could put the screwdriver in through here and there is nothing left in this valve cover. That's why I ordered a brand new one. This is the part that seals all the oil from seeping into your coil pack. Now, in order to install this, you simply just put it into place and just press it in. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and replace the rubber gaskets and washers that attach to the bolts. Now, these bolts sit right in here like that, and they, they have a rubber gasket that seals everything. Now, they, this part can be tricky as well, and sometimes it's very difficult removing the washer away from the bolt. Uh, you're going to have to kind of destroy the washer and then add some type of lubrication on this in order to be able to slip it on. Now, I'm gonna show you how I do it, but however you discover works best for you, uh, you just go with that pretty much. So the easiest way I have discovered to separate these two pieces is I get the screwdriver and I separate the rubber away from the metal. I slide the piece of metal down 
and I simply wedge the flathead screwdriver underneath the rubber. And now I'm going to, with my flathead screwdriver, I'm prying over the lip and I'm sitting, I'm holding it just like this. Now I'm gonna get a pair of cutters. I'm gonna just cut away at the rubber. And just like that, I have separated them. So now that I have the gasket removed, it's time to put this piece over it. And you will have a hard time putting it on if you don't put some type of lubrication. And what I am using is this O-ring silicone lube. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this stuff, dab it on here, on both spots on the bolt itself and around the washer. And you can see there's a lip here. That's a lip, that's the part that you're gonna have a hard time. So everything is nice and lube and hopefully, fingers crossed, I am gonna be able to slide it in and there it is. We got it on there. So this one is ready to install. I have four more to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply a little bit of silicone all along the areas that I removed it uh, because that's basically what the manufacturer uh, recommends. So I'm just putting a little bit, okay? Okay, now it's time to install the valve cover back on and you're going to just massage it into place. Now that I have this valve cover in place, I can start to install all the bolts that hold it down into place. And I'm simply gonna just twist them on by hand. So now when it comes down to tightening down the valve cover, these bolts have a certain amount of torque specs. Now, it is very important for you to follow this procedure and there is a certain sequence that you should do. You should start with the top, move your way to the bottom, and then you move your way to the right bolt and then go across to number four and number five. Now, it shows you right here that it is 8.7 foot pounds and it just so happens that my torque wrench uh, lowest setting goes down only to 10 foot pounds. I believe that 10 foot pounds is not that much compared to the 8.7 but what I'm trying to say here is you're not going, if you don't use the torque wrench, which it's okay, make sure you're not overdoing it, you're not going very tight Eight foot pounds is very little and it doesn't take much to hold this down. So don't overdo it, just put it snug if you're not using the torque wrench. I'm gonna use mine and I'm gonna put it to 10 foot pounds. I think it's gonna be fine. You can see that's all it takes. It's not a lot of force and since I'm using this extension, it further reduces the amount of torque that I'm transferring down, but it's about I would say it's about 10 foot pounds to nine foot pounds right now that I'm transferring down. You can see there's, it's not a lot of pressure. So make sure you're not overdoing it. You're letting that gasket do its job and it's to properly seal. And it cannot seal if you're squishing everything very tight, making gaps all the way around this valve cover gasket. Now I'm gonna continue to follow the pattern, the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. All right, so now it's time to install the coil packs and I have six brand new coil packs. So now since I am done with this section, I'm going to go ahead and start to plug in all the pigtails that I removed to be able to access the valve cover. So I'm going to go ahead and plug everything back in. This part is very important. Once you finish one side, plug everything in and then move to the next. So now it's time to connect the alternator cable back together. And I have this magnet here and I have the nut. And it could be tricky, so I'm gonna show you this little trick. I have the nut installed, connected to this magnet 
to the side of the, ma the magnet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it right where it's supposed to go. And once I have it where it needs to sit, I'm simply going to use my finger and keep it in place and remove the magnet. And now the nut is sitting exactly where it needs to be installed. So now that I have this whole section done, what I'm going to do is just give it a good visual inspection and make sure I have everything plugged in before I move on to the next step. Now we're going to turn our attention to the back valve cover gasket. Now, when it comes to removing all of this, it's going to be very difficult for me to show you exactly where am I sticking my hand and what am I pulling. So I'm going to do the best to describe it to you as we're doing it. I'm going to just show you as we go, but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for this part of the video. And basically what we're doing is the same thing that we've done in the front, we're going to do in the back. And some of the things is a little different, but it's more or less the same. So let's go ahead and start. And right now we're going to start with this front hose that's connected to this piece of pipe right here. Okay, now that I have all of these pigtails removed and you can see this harness is a little bit freed up and I have this hose out of the way. In the back of this harness on the plastic, feel around right on here, right along this area, right here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt and there's one on this side as well. You're going to have to break those loose so you can free up this harness and you can remove this valve cover. All right, now you can see I have the harness very loose and it's gonna be easy to access this valve cover. So now the next thing you're gonna do is right along the back, just like in the front, there's some plugs for the coil packs. You're gonna to wanna to release all of those. There's three of them back here. So now what I'm gonna do is using the 10 millimeter ratchet, I am going to loosen all the coil pack nuts. Okay. Now that I have all of those nuts removed, I'm simply going to just remove the coil packs. Here's one. So now that I have all of the coil packs removed, I'm going to go ahead and break all these loose and remove the bolts that are here along the front. And then there's going to be two along the back, just like the front valve cover. Now that I have removed all five bolts, the valve cover, it's ready to come out. Now, just like I mentioned in the one in the front, the one in the rear is probably just going to be as tight and you're going to want to take your time removing it. Pry it up, move the harness a little bit out of the way and start to pull up and forward. All right, guys, so I figured it would be a lot easier to go ahead and remove the valve cover and then explain exactly where the pigtails are that I removed and how I did it. So all along here, all along the front, I remove all of the pigtails for the injectors. Okay, so I can make some space. I also remove this ground connector that attaches to this bracket right here. And of course, I remove all, all of the pigtails for the coil packs and along the back here hidden back here there's two plugs i remove those and of course all of these right here okay once you have all of that disattached and you have plenty of space don't forget to unbolt that bracket and i forgot to unbolt that bracket and it fought me and once i discovered that there was a bolt there because you can't see it it screws onto the top of the valve cover. Once you remove that, then it's going to be a piece of cake. You're still going to have to kind of maneuver the, the harness out of the way to pull up and go forward and, and twist it forward, but you will be able to uh, remove it like I have. So let's go ahead and go to the next step and it's cleaning this out. We're going to clean that silicone, that gasket that's been laid on here. So there's going to be one here and one in the back that I can't show you because, of course, 
the camera doesn't fit in there but we're going to do we're going to use the same process we're going to scrape away from the cylinder head making sure we don't get any in the cavity all right so just like i showed you before i'm going to stick a screwdriver right in here and a lightly tap Now I could remove the gasket. So I wanted to take the time to talk about the valve cover um, because I ran into the situation just a little bit ago. Well, two days ago, I stopped the video. I ordered another valve cover uh, because I didn't want to install it on the vehicle. And I wanted to address this situation that I'm encountering just in case you are too. Um, these valve covers, like I was showing you before, they break down right along here. Okay, and you can see this one has a big hole. All right, so when I went to remove the one in the rear, it didn't have a hole. It wasn't leaking like the one in the front, but I can see it was starting to break down and deform the cylinder. You can see it started, it was starting to melt or corrode or whatever, whatever it was doing. It was starting to do the same thing that's that happened to the front so i decided to order a brand new one if you encounter this i have a link and you could order it through amazon i ordered it through amazon it was two day delivery it's already here so now i get to install it but here's the situation the valve cover comes with a gasket already so you might end up with having extra gaskets you might end up having extra parts depending on how you do this job if you pull the valve covers off first and you decide hey it needs valve covers then you don't have to order the gaskets the only thing that doesn't come with the valve covers and I'll show you in a second is the grommets that go around the bolts the little rubber bushings they don't come with the valve covers you still gonna have to obtain those somehow sometimes they sell those separately so these are the bushings or the grommets I was talking about and they sit right in here when you install the valve cover back on they go right in here and the bolt goes over it and the bushing keeps all the oil inside now this is the brand new valve cover you can see it comes with gaskets it comes with everything except for this piece so uh, just wanted to show that looks brand new looks good I'm gonna install this right now so you're going to install a little bit of RTV or silicone right along here this is a gasket maker uh, material and this is what the manufacturer uh, recommends for you to install this valve cover gasket on so I put a little bit here and a little bit in the back you can't see the one in the back but it's the same situation like we did in the front so that's in place and now we're gonna go ahead and massage this valve cover in there All right, now that she's in place, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt everything down. But when you're doing the one in the rear, make sure to feel around because you can't see anything. Feel around, make sure you don't have any wires pinching underneath the gasket and everything is installed correctly. Just feel all along the perimeter and make sure there's nothing stuck underneath before you start to tighten everything down. All right, just like we did in the front, I'm gonna be twerking these down to about 10 foot pounds because I my torque wrench doesn't go down to eight. So now that I have the valve cover installed before I put the coil packs in, I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging everything where it goes. It's time to put the coil packs in. And of course I'm putting a little bit of lubrication right along these boots. It really helps with the seizing of the boots when it's time to, it comes time to service it again and pull them off. And I'm just going to install all three, install the nuts, plug it in, and we are ready to move on to the next part. So, Okay guys, so now it's time to install the intake manifold back on. And right in front of me I have the new gasket and I have the old one. You can see how the old one has broken down and it is no longer any good. So. I, of course, I purchased a new one 
and I'm going to install this in. If you decide to use the old one and install it, it might seal properly or it might not. You could run into a situation where you have a uh, running lean situation where bank one and bank two are running lean or bank one runs lean or bank two runs lean. And what that means is when you have a leak that's going past the mass air sensor that's not calculating how much air volume is going in, it's not able to compensate for that. And what happens is the engine detects that there is a bank of, because you have bank one and bank two, the engine detects that there is a bank that's running leaner, which means there isn't enough fuel. So your mixture will be thrown completely off and you could have drivability problems. So I would recommend you replacing the gasket and installing a brand new one. I know uh, some, some guys might get lucky and install the old one and be just fine, but just in case, install a new one and you will eliminate the majority of your headaches. And here we have the new one and the old one. So I just slid that in there and it's in place and I'm going to go ahead and grab the intake manifold and slide it in here. So one thing that I notice is uh, in these runners, there is a little bit of carbon buildup. I went ahead and cleaned it a little bit and wiped it off, but this car would benefit from an induction flush. And in a later video, I'm also going to show you how to do that. So subscribe, follow me so you could, if you are running into the same situation, you could address that. So here we have the intake manifold, and if you take a look inside the ports, inside all these ports, I have clean I have cleaned out every one of these ports. It was a little bit, it had a little bit of carbon buildup, and I just simply used some carburetor cleaner, and I sprayed a little bit, and I wiped it away. Now, this is why I'm saying this car would benefit from an induction flush, because when you do an induction flush, it basically sprays into the intake manifold and cleans all of this away. Now, before I install this, you could see some of the old gasket, it's on here. I want to make sure I scrape this off and I clean it very well so it could seal properly. And you don't want any of this stuff when you're scraping it off. You don't want any of this stuff going inside the cylinder. So make sure after you scrape it, you blow this off or you shake it off and make sure none of it gets inside your engine. So when it comes time to scraping this gasket off, you could use a regular scraper. You could have some type of, of abrasive material like this so anything that you could scrape this off and remove all of that old material off and notice i am scraping away from the holes i'm not going into it i'm scraping away but this is all the old loose stuff that you want to remove okay i did get some inside the 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 ports and i'm simply just going to use shop air and just clean everything out <laughs> So I have the gasket in place, I have the intake manifold with me, and right before I install it, I'm just gonna take one more peek and make sure nothing's in the way. And I didn't forget to, to plug something in. So I'm looking at the injectors, all the injectors are plugged in. Everything that I disconnected is connected again. Because once you put the intake manifold on, you cannot get to any of these plugs. So if any of this was loosen, loosened up during the install process, make sure you take care of this part. All right, so I'm just gonna snug these up, and of course there's gonna be a torque sequence to do with these, but I'm just gonna bring them down a little bit closer to being snug or tightened, and then I can move on to the torque sequence. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten all the bolts down, and I have my torque wrench set to 16 foot-pounds, and I'm gonna go ahead and follow the torque sequence that it requires for you to bolt everything down. So I just wanted to go over why there is a torque sequence. And the reason why all the manufacturers do a torque sequence is because they want you to distribute the force being applied down to the gasket evenly. If you notice, majority of the time you will start in the center and then you'll move your way outwards. And evenly you're gonna, you start on one side and they have you jump to the other side and keep they keep staggering the force being applied to the gasket. And that's so 
everything is applied evenly because if you start on this corner and you continue to tighten everything coming from the left to the right you're going to have one side that's going to be tighter than the other side and the gasket will not seat properly and seal okay so this is the upper part of your intake and this sits right over this part right here now i wanted to go over this with you guys because i've noticed in mine the gasket seems to be really good it seems to be in good condition and i know from years of experience that it is still soft it still looks like it's it it doesn't look like it's brittle it looks like it would it will hold so if you run into this situation where your gasket still looks good you could you reuse it but in my situation since i already have another gasket and it came with the kit i'm gonna i'm going to go ahead and replace it since i already have one but you don't have to replace it yeah i can tell this gasket it's still in good shape it doesn't break and it's still soft this is a good gasket so i also want you to pay attention to the center of this area right here okay in the center you have also another gasket now this is the original one the kit did not come with this piece right here so since i can see it's soft and it doesn't look like it's going to crumble and break and i don't think it's going to be a problem i'm going to go ahead and install it so i'm just going to go ahead and install it right now and if you did what i did and separated everything in containers this part would be a lot easier and just finding all the bolts where they go is you have it separated and sorted so of course the top of this part of the intake manifold has a torque sequence as well but i'm going to go ahead and snug these down without going too tight and then go ahead and torque them down okay so i have my torque wrench set to 10 foot pounds it actually calls for nine but my torque wrench the lowest setting is 10 so i think 10 is going to be okay i'm just going one foot pound over i think it's going to be fine so uh, the biggest thing is not to overdo it. So I believe if I uh, leave it at 10, it should be just fine. So we have this part installed. Let's go ahead and start plugging some of the hoses and plugs back in. Okay, so now it's time to install the throttle body back and I have the new gasket here. All right, now we could put our throttle body back on. All right, so now I'm gonna to torque down the throttle body and it requires 16 foot pounds. So of course, don't forget to plug in your throttle body cable. All right, so I'm going ahead and installing the intake. All right, guys, so we have everything installed. All I'm missing is to connect the battery. But since this is the end of the video, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to check out the channel because since I buy used cars, all of my cars are used and old. They all need repairs. So there might be a video in how to fix something on the G35, the 370Z, the G37, or even the Miata. And we have back there a Honda Ridgeline. So there's always something new being uploaded into the channel and there's always something to repair here in this place. So let me also show you what else is going on. I have purchased a brand new Alltel scan tool. I'm gonna to be reviewing this and comparing it to my Snap-on scan tool. And I'm gonna be showing you some of the features it has and why I believe this is something that you should have in your house if you're doing repairs if you're trying to diagnose things it is always a good thing to have a scan tool that lets you do function tests and that's what i'm going to be reviewing i'm going to be comparing this to a five thousand dollar scan tool and this is only five hundred dollars and i think it is a better deal than what i got so tune in for that video that's coming up very soon i'm in the process of recording it as i film this right now all right so if you found this video useful and helpful, please give it a thumbs up because it will help the next person find it in the search engine. So all of the videos I have posted, every time you guys give it a thumbs up or you even subscribe, it gets moved up 
into this uh, algorithm so somebody else could find it and somebody else could solve their problem. So please, please, please like it and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.